Does your dual fuel generator work with natural gas? Today I'll show you if it's possible and how you can find out and what you'll need to make it work. Now when purchasing a dual fuel generator, the first thing that you will see out of the box is going to be a hose that will look like this and this is going to be your regulator for your propane bottle. This is going to put the pressure at a correct pressure for your generator to run. Other type of dual fuel units will come with something that looks a little bit like this, which obviously you can see is quite a bit different. And this is what is the determining factor is if you can run your dual fuel generator on natural gas, because this here is a regulator, much the same way that this one is. But what you have here is an on-demand or a load regulator, which this, if you've seen some of my other videos, looks very similar to this right here. This is a kit that you can buy to turn any gas generator into a tri-fuel kit so you can run propane or natural gas. And so now I'll show you why your dual fuel generator, if it comes with this setup, this means more than likely you should be able to run natural gas on your generator, but you will have to buy a kit like this, which we will go over in just a minute. Now this dual fuel generator from GenMax, and it doesn't matter the brand, a lot of them are very similar or almost exactly the same. They use a lot of the same components and they will use the same type of regulators and the same type of load blocks or these, you know, load um, regulators as well. And so the easiest way to tell is to just take off the side panel. You will see the hose that comes in right there. That's your propane line. This is gonna come up and make a loop into this fuel selector switch. From your fuel selector switch, you have a little pin right here. There's a little electronic solenoid activation switch from when you switch over from gas to propane. And so then what will happen is that your propane line that goes from here to your carburetor, this hose should be a straight shot leading right into your carburetor basically. It's hard to see on this one, but I will show you the difference here in a second, but your carburetor is here and that's the solenoid right there. So when that switch is activated, a pin will move in, stopping the fuel flow to the carburetor and now allowing your gas to flow instead with no fuel or gasoline flowing into the generator. Now, if you have a bigger dual fuel unit like this, you'll have your propane line that comes in right here and it should do the same thing, go into your fuel selector switch, which will be back there but the bigger thing that allows you not to be able to run natural gas is going to be the mounted load regulator that is inside the generator. So in order to make it to where you can run natural gas, you would have to bypass this unit and like the other generator, you would have to take this hose from the other side and run a straight shot into your carburetor and bypass this unit and then utilize that kit that I showed you. So if this is what your generator looks like, well then you're kind of out of luck in making it a tri-fuel unit because of this internal load regulator or on-demand regulator. And if you do modify anything inside your generator by removing this and bypassing it, well of course that is gonna void your warranty. So now that we've found out which generator type will run on natural gas, you will need to buy a kit that will look like this. These are made from Sentry. There are a few other ones out there and these run about $100. So now you have to determine is it worth it for you to buy a kit like this or simply buy another generator that is a tri-fuel unit. You will have to buy a few fittings and the hose that's appropriate for your setup and how far you wanna be away from your, uh, you know, basically your propane meter because that will determine the size of line that you need. Now, I recommend, obviously, if you're going to be hooking up anything to your probe or to your uh, natural gas setup, check with local, you know, um, uh, PG&E, make sure this is all done properly. This is a quick connect that I have sitting here that I'm basically just using as demonstration. So you'll want to run a half inch line, a natural gas line from here and make sure it's at least 15 feet away from your house. So probably a 20 foot line on a half inch. Then you'll run it into this load regulator. And then from here, you want this load regulator to be on basically a two or three foot cord or hose anyway into your unit. You want this as close to the generator as possible. That way the um, diaphragm that's in here works correctly under enough vacuum because as it gets farther away, it'll start to run poorly. So make sure this is no more than about three feet from the actual unit. 
Now, after you get everything hooked up, you should test for leaks. Now, you can do the soapy water trick and look for bubbles. You can use a little pin like this. These are relatively cheap and good to have. They detect all kinds of different types of gases, so they'll detect swamp gas, natural gas, propane, and more. Um, so these are just kind of a nice tool to have, and I'll even have a link below. But you just simply go up and do a little sniff check on all of your connections. You can also come down here to your load block, check for there, and check the connections here, which, oops, looks like somebody might be leaking, in which this is why. You do a little check, which it was probably up here. Let's see, where were you? It's usually this connection because this one I just kind of put on there a second ago. Oh, yeah, look at that. So I'll tighten this up because this one I probably had loose. Okay, now that we've tightened that up there, and that's why you have these little pins just to check, and check everywhere else, and now we are good to go. You'll switch your generator over to the propane side like you normally would, and then you're just going to come back here and do a little prime real quick with this. Sometimes this can leak out a little bit, but this is usually about a three to five second hold. You might be able to hear that. And that's about all you need. And go ahead and press this. And we'll see what happens. Okay, and there it goes. So now that the generator is running, what we will have to do is make an adjustment on this. This is your load block on the top. It acts as like a manual fuel screw or changing your jet size manually. So you have to do this while it's under a load. That way you're giving the generator enough fuel. So what we are gonna do is hook up something to it real quick. I'll use this just as a demonstration. So now how you would set this is by turning this on. Basically a pretty full load is what you want. So this is gonna be about 15, 1600 watts. Okay, so first thing you do is you take this jam nut or your stop nut, however you wanna call it, and you back it off so we can start turning this in because we're gonna lean out the fuel mixture until the generator kind of starts to die off and then you'll hear it and once it does, then we're gonna open it back up. I've done this quite a few times, so I'm going pretty quick. You'll wanna do it maybe about one or one and a half turns at a time. And now you hear it drop off. So now you go ahead and back it back out until it starts to run smooth again. And then normally what I do is once it's running smooth, I'll give it one more full turn out, at least with natural gas. And then this is where I'll lock it in position and then for the most part, this is pretty much it. It doesn't take too long to get this set. And you may have to start it and stop it a couple times. But for the most part, now I think we have this set up and this is how you would do this particular kit. And this is what helps you do it the correct way. So now you know which dual fuel generators can work on natural gas. Hope this video helped you out. Hope to see you next time.